Hi friends, good morning. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Well, I wanna welcome you to another flower stand setup. This time we're gonna be setting up the stand with ranunculus. I think I'm gonna mainly just do straight ranunculus bunches at the stand today. But I wanna thank you all so much before we get deep into this video about just being willing to take a more realistic approach and a more vlog style approach to the flower stand this year. I feel like that's gonna allow me a lot more time to produce more videos and also to share a lot more cut flowers and a lot more flower stands with you, which is what I'm really, really passionate about. So it's about eight o'clock now and it's going to be really hot this week. So the way that I'm going to deal with that is that I'm going to harvest for the flower stand in the morning. I'm going to let the ranunculus condition during the course of the day, and then I'm gonna set up the flower stand at about five o'clock. So I'll be selling from about five o'clock to nine o'clock, but I'll go ahead and advertise on Facebook, on my personal Facebook page, that the flowers are going to be for sale early in the morning as soon as we cut these. So I'll have kind of pictures for everybody to see early on in the day, but that way the ranunculus won't have to sit out and be exposed to 85, 92. I think even one day it's going to be 95 degrees and it's still May. So we'll see what that ends up doing to the ranunculus. But I wanted to share with you some things that I did differently this year with the ranunculus that I feel like has made a big difference. So in prior years, I always had the goal of starting my ranunculus March 1st and planting them out around St. Patrick's Day. But this year, if you've been following me, you know that I had to have surgery in March. So I knew that was gonna happen. So I decided to start the ranunculus almost an entire month earlier. So I started the corms on February 9th and then once they sprouted in the basement after about 10 days, I grew them under lights until March 1st. And at that time I planted them out prior to having surgery. And I feel like they, what was interesting, I guess I should say is they didn't bloom any earlier, but the plants themselves this year are so much healthier. Now, is that because I got them in the ground earlier? Maybe is that because we have not had a lot of constant rainfall, so I don't have to deal with a lot of moisture staying on the leaves like I have in years past? Or is it also because this year I chose never to fertilize my ranunculus? The main problem that I have with ranunculus is not necessarily growing them, but keeping them healthy with the pests and rainfall that I have here. So I usually would have this beautiful crop of ranunculus. I would cut it once and then wouldn't you know it, they would get covered with powdery mildew and they would get covered, I mean covered in black bean aphids. And being no spray, I just decided to say that's the way it's gonna be for me here. But this year I have no powdery mildew and no black bean aphids. So was over fertilizing contributing to maybe a lot of lush leafy growth, which then drew in the black bean aphids. I'm really not sure what the answer is yet because it's the first year that I've had this really nice result. But moving forward, I'm definitely going to repeat this to see if I have the same results. But moving forward, I'm definitely going to repeat what I did this year to see if I have the same results. I'm going to start them earlier at the beginning of February. I think I won't even bother to grow them under lights for any period of time. I'll just give them that 10 days to sprout in early February, plant them out, cover them, and let them really get established when it's cold. And then I'm not going to fertilize again next year and see if I get these same great results. And I wanna share that with you guys and really hope to hear back from you. Have you tried any variations on growing ranunculus that has really helped you to combat pests and diseases on the ranunculus once they start blooming? I'm really interested to read your comments and learn from you. Now my guess is, and this is definitely a guess, that the main contributing factor to why my ranunculus are so much healthier this year is because we haven't had a lot of rain and so I've been able to control the amount of moisture that they get. 
and I have been very consistent with watering. Now in the past, I've never been able to do that because it's always just been raining all the time, sometimes all day here in spring. I even think sometimes I've lost a lot of ranunculus due to the corms drowning. So maybe I'll do everything the same next year and we'll have a really rainy spring again and I'll have powdery mildew probably and black bean aphids. But you know, even if I can eliminate those black bean aphids by maybe getting them into the ground sooner and not fertilizing, maybe that is the path forward for growing ranunculus outside in zone 6B. Let me know what you think about all of this. Now, some people had asked about wrapping the bouquets, so we'll definitely do that together in today's video. And also about how the flowers sold. So when I first open the stand, the sales are usually not that great because people kind of have to get used to me being open. So the first day we sold two, the second day open we sold two, and the third day open we sold three. So with the ranunculus and with it being hot, I'm only going to put out three or four every day and we'll see how that goes. But these are gorgeous, aren't they? Now that is just a bucket full of beauty. What do you think, Grace? You happy with the ranunculus this year? Grace is also very happy with how the ranunculus are doing this year. Let's go ahead and get this bucket inside into the addition, and then I'll see you guys tonight to set up the flower stand. So to wrap these, I'm using two sheets of tissue paper because I have these on hand from a business I used to own. Then what I like to do in terms of ones that are in a soft jar, hold it up like this. So you have two peaks at the top. Then once again, in consideration of the size of the soft jar, I'm going to fold this up. Then I'm gonna fold these in. So that's how it will look. I'll wrap that around the bouquet. Staple it. And then I use some yarn I have around the house to tie a nice bow right around the rim of the jar. And now that's ready to go out to the stand. And Grace is ready to go to the park. Did you hear what I said, Grace? <laughs> so we've got our ranunculus as the focal flower. We have the sweet william, the black button, bachelor's buttons. I have some nigella tucked into these. And then three stems of Solomon seal just surrounding the bouquet, all wrapped up and ready for their new homes. Friends, it's well, hey friends, it's currently about 11 o'clock the next day. Yesterday we sold two of those bouquets and this morning I put out two additional bouquets and I also freshened up the ones that were out there yesterday evening. But something kind of interesting that I saw in regards to what I mentioned yesterday about the ranunculus and the black bean aphids, I think the black bean aphids are on my ranunculus because they're on my breadseed poppies. <laughs> So there they are. And it was interesting because right here in the corner of this bed, I pulled out three poppies a few days ago because I thought they just were too overcrowded or you know, just something going on. I just pulled them, the leaves didn't look any good and I didn't look closely. It was probably these black bean aphids all along. So I'm gonna have to think about this for a while. So I'm definitely gonna have to think about this for a while. Are the bread seed poppies acting as a trap crop? And was it a good idea to plant them even if they do perish before flowering and setting seed pod, which is what I'm growing them for? 
or was it the location of the beds and that that bed has a lot more organic matter in it than the ranunculus bed? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you think. That's the first time I've ever seen those aphids on the bread seed poppies. And I don't know, I'm just discovering it with you in real time now. So I'm gonna have to think about how I wanna handle that a little bit longer before making a decision. As long as they can put on good seed pods for me, I don't mind that they're covered in aphids. And I'd rather them be on the bread seed poppies than on the ranunculus. But let me take you over to the flower stand real quickly because I'm gonna need to shut down again for the middle of the day and then pick back up again this evening. So here's the two remaining pink ranunculus bunches from yesterday. And what I did was pull out any ranunculus that looked like they were suffering at all from the heat, replace them with new ranunculus this morning, fresh cut, fresh water, and fresh wrapping, just because I messed up the wrapping, putting in some new ranunculus. And then we have the Aviv Piketty Cafe, just straight bunches of those with Solomon Seal. And how about this for a delightful surprise? We have this gorgeous amaryllis blooming on June 1st. Here's also an update on the Clarkia in bloom now. I'm not exactly sure how I would use this at the flower stand based on how it's blooming. It's blooming kind of in the middle of the stem, not blooming up towards the top. So we'll see but at least they're growing a lot better than they did last year. Some are doubles. Most are singles though. It's about 30 minutes later and I see we just sold a bouquet. So another way I'm handling this heat is I'm just trying to keep the flowers inside as long as possible, but also keep four bouquets at the stand at all times. So it was great to see that she ordered, or purchased rather, a bunch of the orange ranunculus. So I'll put these out in their place. And I've also, in preparation for this evening, separated out my best ranunculus so that bouquet building is really fast and easy. And then behind me, I have kind of my bucket of extras that's just gonna be for myself and my mom to play around with. I wanna dry some ranunculus this year too. And then my sink is filling up with compost. I grabbed a quick hot dog and I see I have a notification on my phone that we sold another bouquet via Venmo. So I'm gonna pop back out to the stand with another bouquet and cut some more Solomon seal so I can finish up these two arrangements. So it's two days later and I never ended up setting the flower stand back up because it just stayed way too hot. When I went to bed that night, the temperature was 89 degrees outside at about 10 p.m. So just wasn't worth the risk of putting the ranunculus out in that heat. But the following morning, it was much cooler and I had been advertising all afternoon and evening on Facebook that I was gonna reopen. So I put out five ranunculus bouquets with just 12 ranunculus on three stems of Solomon seal. And I can pop a picture on the screen here. And we ended up selling four by 1030. But then once again, it was 94 degrees by 1030 AM. So I just kept the last ranunculus bouquet for myself. But friends, I think I'm gonna wrap up today's video here because I have some gentlemen coming over to assess the trees over in the orchard. We're going to be getting the bird cherries trimmed up so that we can get in our new evergreen hedge, hopefully really soon here. And hey, how about these Mardigan lilies next to me? Aren't they awesome? Well, I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in your gardens. Hope you're selling lots of cut flowers and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.